Hey, Scott Pimish doing this IKEA Besta hack project and wanted to make a video to share a little bit about the process I went through. I'd heard about these IKEA hacks for the last 10 years or so. Um, didn't really think much of it, just didn't have a use for it, need for it. But recently uh, we realized our kids are getting older and the open play area that we had in the basement um, was very basic, just, you know, a TV on the wall and some random, uh, you know, bookcase furniture that we had collected over the years. Um, it just wasn't cutting it anymore. And we wanted to make a more mature space uh, where our kids could have friends over and just hang out. So this is what brought me back to the whole concept of the IKEA hack. Um, I really liked the, the thought that um, I didn't have to make this from scratch built in. I wasn't uh, really confident I could do that um, cost effectively and make it look good quality. So um, the IKEA hack appealed to me because you're essentially getting finished furniture, you know, with uh, drawers that have rails on them already and, you know, cabinets that are sized to fit. Um, so yeah, it would have that, that finished appearance, but you could do this hack and sort of take these freestanding furniture pieces um, and kind of make it part of the wall. And in this case, uh, I ended up with something that went from the floor all the way to the ceiling. Um, and once I had that idea, I decided I would do what I always do. I'd go to YouTube and try to find some ideas, some inspiration, and maybe some steps on how to go about doing this and making it look good. Unfortunately, when I searched YouTube, I really couldn't find um, anything that suited uh, my needs or my vision. Um, I found a lot of things like, you know, Billy bookcase systems. That's that's a popular IKEA hack. Um, you know, where you take some bookcases, put them on the wall, and maybe trim around them. And you know, they looked good, um, but it wasn't what I needed. Uh, so after striking out on YouTube, um, I just got my pencil and paper out hit up Ikea's website, put some ideas together, um, measured the room space, measured it again, uh, and then started buying stuff. Since I couldn't find anything that really um, filled this need on YouTube, I decided maybe I should start recording it myself and putting a video together. So here I am. Um, unfortunately, I only got this idea about a third of the way through the project, so, uh, You'll see me um, at a point about one third of the way through, uh, kind of narrating through uh, how I got to that point, and you know I've included pictures I took along the way. I don't consider myself a master carpenter or even whatever comes below master carpenter or below that. Um, a casual do-it-yourselfer, maybe a little more um, than casual, just because I've been doing it so long. Um, I tend to use YouTube uh, and a little confidence to figure out just about everything I need to. Um, and so the intended audience for this video is the casual do-it-yourselfer. Um, and in that respect, I'll cover the tools I use along the way. I'll go over the processes I use as well as some of the little things I figured out, the ideas I came up with that could hopefully help other people um, make this kind of thing a reality. Again, you don't need a ton of skill. I'm sure it helps, but you really just need some confidence and you can get this done. In the description below, I'll be sure to include links to all of the part numbers, the materials, um, as well as the actual IKEA units and their part numbers that uh, should hopefully help you get started. I did have to break this video into two parts. It was just too much content. I tried my best to edit out stuff that was either boring or you know fast forward through stuff just so you could kind of see what I was going through, but you don't have to actually sit there and watch me put doors together for an hour. Part one of the video will focus on the actual main structure as well as the doors and the drawer installation. 
Part two will focus on the actual hack portion of the IKEA hack. Um, by that I mean we will be doing the, the trim work, the painting, um, running all the audio, video, cabling, so it really looks like a clean, built-in product. Finally, at the end of all of this, I will be sure to uh, go over a cost breakdown um, that will cover the IKEA materials, uh, the stuff I got on my trips to the hardware store, and that will give us a better sense of how much we actually saved doing this project ourselves as opposed to going with a private contractor. Okay, so here we are. I only decided that it might be a good idea to record this when I was at this point in the project. So I'll try to walk through some of the um, steps I've taken to get to this point. Um, first off, the base. <clears throat> so down here, I decided to make a base uh, using two by sixes. Um, what I did was measure the entire length that I thought this was going to be, um, and broke the base into, uh, two individual pieces. Um, so I have one span that runs all the way to this point, um, and identical pieces in the back. Uh, then I have additional two by sixes uh, that I ran right there and two there. Uh, <laughs> and then um, down there just to, uh, just to give like some kind of footing to the units sitting above it. Uh, so I made two of those join them together in the middle uh, with some wood screws. And then once it was all uh, assembled, what I did was I pushed it up against the, the wall in the corner here um, to figure out where I was going to cut the carpet. Uh, you'll kind of notice I have a gap right there also on the other corner. Um, and that actually, worked out well. So when I, when I placed this down and pushed it up against the uh, baseboard that was already there, um, the baseboard itself was bumping this whole thing out, uh, about that half an inch or so. Um, and I, yeah, I just scored a line there and there and made the cut and pulled that all up. And that just naturally left the gap right there and there that I'd be able to put um, the future baseboard and it should slide right in there. Uh, and then after that cut was made, I, I uh, pushed it up against the wall again. Um, and then I took my blade and I made a cut just following the line of the wood. Uh, cut into the carpet and the padding and then I was able to just easily pull all that up leaving the concrete floor. Uh, the thing with the poured concrete slabs here, uh, they're not level at all. So I spent a good amount of time using these guys, shims, uh, to try to bring it all up to um, level. And that is infuriating. If you have any kind of leaning towards OCD, you know, you'll, you'll go crazy because you will uh, 
get it level over here. And then you'll go over here and start shimming that to level that up, which will then throw off the leveling there. So yeah, it, uh, it drove me a little nuts. Um, if anybody has tips for doing that better, uh, you know, leave comments. Um, but yeah, then once, once that was all in place, I was able to, uh, screw the base into the studs behind the wall. Um, another thing about Colorado here is we have expansive soil, uh, which means that the, the soil underneath the house can heave or sink. Um, and so what they do here is they have floating walls in the basement where they'll put in, um, they'll take uh, like a 22 gauge nail gun and uh, shoot nails into a board, affixing it to the floor, and then they'll bring the, the framing of the wall down to about, you know, that high and, uh, and join it with just these, these little, these rods. And that allows the, the concrete flooring to heave or descend a little bit without, you know, shifting the entire house above it. We've been in the house now for over five years, so I was pretty confident that there wouldn't really be any more shifting. So once I had the frame down and set where I wanted to and shimmed to level, I took three and a half inch screws and I, um, you know, aimed it up here into the bottom horizontal stud uh, at the bottom of the hanging portion of the wall frames. Um, so yeah. At this point, this thing is in, it's not going anywhere, it's level. Uh, so then I started installing the IKEA cabinetry. Um, again, this is the best, uh, the best line I went with. Um, on the website, they uh, have a configurator. You can kind of, you know, put things together and get an idea of what they'd look like. So I had done that before purchasing and you know I guess this is sort of part of the hack but some of these pieces aren't really designed by IKEA or advertised as being able to install this way uh, but here let me walk you through it I am um, so these these units on the bottom these are just like you know two cubbies I guess we call them at this point because they don't doors or anything so yeah uh, one by twos. So I got three of those to go on the bottom. Um, and then above that, we have these shelving units. Uh, and I got three of these guys, one, two, three down there. Uh, and then up top, they sell the same kind of things, but uh, just shorter. Um, so I got a two by one unit there, uh, one by one unit over there. And then here is actually um, one of their console stands. Uh, you can mount it to the wall, but not necessarily uh, that high. Um, but unfortunately that was the only piece that I could, uh, I could find um, that would fit that need up there. So as for the install, um, the, the bottom row was definitely the trickiest. Uh, well, first off I was, you know, as soon as I got the, uh, the base put in place, I, I put the best of units up to make sure like my measurements were good and thankfully they were. Um, so yeah, once I got the, uh, the best, uh, units here, um, I went ahead and attached them to each other, uh, just using cabinet screws, uh, not too many cause you know, wait, where are they? Yeah, <laughs> there's two, um, there's one, there's one on the other side. You know, I just, I just didn't want them like 
shifting at all. They didn't really need, you know, many cabinet screws. And then I also use these things that Ikea provided to attach them to the wall. So that's just a three and a half inch wood screw uh, going into that little grommet or whatever you want to call it that Ikea provided. Um, so that will, you know, it doesn't have to, you know, support a lot of force. It just needs to keep the cabinets from rocking at all. So they served their purpose. Um, then you'll also notice I pulled outlets through here. Uh, so the back of the Ikea units sits away from the wall by like three quarters of an inch to an inch. So I had to pick up some uh, outlet gang box uh, extenders to put in there just so I could pull it through. So what I did, uh, I measured the wall where the outlets were in relation to where I knew the cabinets would be. And then I measured the back of the Besta cabinets, marked off uh, where I was gonna cut, and then just used a little uh, Dremel saw to, uh, to cut the outlet holes. And you know, I guess it's the whole measure twice cut once, but I, I got it right. <laughs> uh, so that was a relief, and I was able to, uh, to make those look nice except for this guy over here. Um, <laughs> I don't know if you run into this, but uh, one of the outlets, this outlet right here, it was right behind this post. And so I started thinking, you know, okay, well, how can I work around this? Because with that outlet there, I mean, I couldn't even push this unit flush against the wall. So, I, I thought, well, maybe I could just like, you know, disconnect the outlet, uh, you know, just, just something to get it out of the way. But then I started thinking about, you know, will that violate any kind of code, not having an outlet every, you know, whatever it is, like 16 feet. Um, so I went and I picked up a, an old construction box and I cut into the wall behind this and I was able to just basically leave the old uh, the old new construction gang box uh, that was attached to the stud where it was and install this new <laughs> old construction gang box uh, and then just pull the, the Romax, the electrical into the new box and move the outlet over there. Um, unfortunately, the um, outlet extender didn't fit within this old construction gang box. So uh, I had to cut it with my, my, my Dremel and it's still sticking out a little too far. I mean, it's, it's firm, but uh, I need to clean that up. So I'm gonna go back and do that. Um, so yeah, with that, the bottom row was done and I felt like progress would speed up. Um, one thing I got to show you though is over here. You'll notice I have these random blocks here. And when I was building the base, I specifically built it one and a half inches longer than the cabinets because I plan to put a door here and for that door to open, I really wanted to have a little clearance over here on the right side. And I really like to use this, uh, this pine that you can get at just like Home Depot or Lowe's. It's pre-cut, it's finished pretty well. Um, the edges are clean and I wanna be able to take a trim piece and fill in that gap. So what I did as I was going along, I just took some scrap two by sixes and I took a piece of this board and I pressed it in there and held the little two by six piece 
And with that two by six in place, I then just took some cabinet screws through here uh, to affix these boards so that when I'm trimming this out and trying to make it look built in, I can screw that trim piece right into those boards. Um, there's some up top, I'll get to that in a minute. Uh, and then onto these shelves. Um, one thing I like about these Besta units, everything is measured to fit together. So like, even though one of these has, you know, an edge with that thickness, their designers were smart enough to know people might kind of want to match these up. And so you add them together and the thickness is the same. Uh, so yeah, I was able to butt these two together. Um, once they were in place, I used these just, I can't get light back there, but just, uh, you know, simple wood screws. God, I want to say they were about two inches long. Um, just to drill that, to connect it to this piece. So I knew that these wouldn't move at least on the bottom. And same thing I did with the lower ones. I installed some cabinet screws just to, uh, you know, keep them fastened together there. Uh, at this point, I hadn't attached these to the back wall. Um, you know, I mean, I could have used my level and made sure it was perfectly vertical, but thing is when you're building up that way and you're building up over here and then you're going to be doing a cross piece you want it to make sure it all lines up tightly before attaching anything so uh so i left these not connected to the wall and there's some degree of like sway back and forth that i knew i could work with uh so yeah that brings us to this this top row this was a, trying to figure this out was a little more of a challenge. At first I thought, okay, I'd install that piece and I'd install that piece and then figure out how to hoist the middle piece up there and hold it in place while screwing it to the neighbors. Um, and I didn't like that idea. It just, it was too unpredictable. And I really didn't want to fall off a uh, step stool and be crushed by one of these things either. So I ended up assembling this whole thing. I, 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 I assembled the Ikea pieces and then when they were on the ground, I used a bunch of cabinet screws to attach them to each other. Uh, and that, that gave it more rigidity, but you know, we're also talking about Ikea furniture here. And a lot of it is like, you know, hollow cardboard, honeycomb meshes and stuff. So I didn't have that much faith that this wouldn't be, uh, you know, I didn't want to lift it up on one end and have like these two pieces snap and I'm left with broken Ikea furniture. Uh, around the same time, I knew that much like the, the trim piece over here, I was going to want to install crown at some point. So while this was still on the ground, I uh, took some more two by six scraps and started attaching them here, doing the same deal where I, I held up my little scrap piece of wood to make sure the, they were set back exactly how far I wanted them. And that's when I realized I could use a bigger piece here and kind of, I can't, you might be able to see that. Uh, I, I was able to screw it in uh, multiple spots on both sides. And the thought was that would give this a little more rigidity when I was lifting it up into place. And it worked out. Of course, the whole time um, screwing more two by sixes up there, it's occurring to me, I'm just making this thing heavier and heavier. Uh, and yeah, actually, uh, 
at one point I was like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to get somebody to help me lift this up. Uh, and I kind of get tired of waiting more than uh, a few minutes for uh, responses. So I slid the whole thing across the floor here and lifted one side up here and then got down over here and lifted the other side and just slid it into place. And it was like a perfect moment because everything lined up exactly how I wanted it to. Um, oh yeah, I should also point out that before sliding it into place, I took another piece of that, that Home Depot uh, pine and I installed it here, screwing it into the studs just to give it at least uh, another point of support. Um, and yeah, I was happy when I came home from work the next day and saw that there was no sagging and that this was all still up there. Now, once that was all up in place, that's when I came back and I uh, attached these shelves to the back of the wall. And Ikea, uh, they provide these little plastic covers. I can't get it off there, but um, yeah, these little plastic covers that just cover the piece to make it look a little, you know, less obvious. Uh, so with, with those pieces all screwed into place, um, I got back up on top and I proceeded to do the same deal where I screwed these top pieces down into the pieces below them. Uh, and I... I was going to attach these to the back of the wall, but decided it would be overkill. Because actually over here, um, since this is sold as a TV console that can be wall mounted, they included some hardware. It's, it's not the greatest, but uh, uh, they have these, um, these little metal brackets that get installed. And... I, I normally like going for the stud anytime I'm attaching something to the wall. This, it shouldn't, you know, since it's like attached here and attached to the thing below it, which is attached to the wall, I knew it wasn't gonna be like a lot of risk of um, pulling away from the wall. So I felt more than comfortable just using drywall anchors here. Uh, and I think, there, yeah, there's four of these that attached the whole thing. Let me get this guy back on there. Um, and, you know, while I don't love the look of that, we're probably gonna have like baskets up there anyway that will cover, uh, cover that from view. Uh, so, what's next? Well, I think what I'm going to do next is jump on the doors. I got all these Ikea door faces. Um, and you know, they sell everything individually. So, you know, I got the door hardware, the hinge hardware, the handles, everything ready to go. I'm gonna put one door there, a door there and there. And then here I opted for these, uh, these like half height drawers um, for things like remotes and that will leave enough space above it for some AV equipment, probably a receiver, Xbox, PlayStation, whatever. Um, and then I'm going to take uh, a whole cutter and run my power and cabling back here. Uh, I think I'm going to drill a hole right there uh, to run some speaker wire through. I'm not doing anything crazy in here. I have like a dedicated home theater in another room. Um, so here I just want to do some good stereo bookshelf speakers and go with that. Uh, anyway, enough about audio video uh, for this space. So before I started this all, I thought about how big of a TV I'd want to get for this area and landed on 75 inches. And that 
will fit in here. Uh, at first, I thought I was just going to trim and paint that area, but I think I'm gonna get a uh, flat board, cut it down to fit in there, just to make it look a little more finished. And, you know, all these, all these homes here have this textured wall, which can be a pain in the butt when painting. Um, so yeah, I think, I think getting a smooth surface, it'll just make it more cohesive with the rest of this unit. Um, then I'm going to, uh, install the baseboard around here. I already have that. I just need to cut it, paint it and install it. Uh, I have a little thin trim piece. I may or may not run up and down. I think I'm going to just to cover up that little gap. Um, I mean, that's the whole part of the hack, I guess, right? Uh, and then I'll install that trim piece there. Up top, I have a, uh, like a five and a half inch wide board like that, that I am going to attach to these boards and that will give me a surface that I can then attach crown molding to. And then I might be done. I'm kind of hesitant to say it because it feels like these things never are done, but I think I might be done. So yeah, next up, doors and drawers. All right, doors and drawers. This is probably gonna be long and boring, so I'll do one of those things, I think, where I speed up the video and play some generic music over it. See if I can figure that out. See you
Okay. That took a while. <laughs> that was like an hour. So hopefully the uh, fast forward thing makes it less boring for you than it was for me. Um, I learned some things. Uh, I had to work around some things I may have done incorrectly before. So I'll show that to you. I also think there's something wrong with this drawer, the rails. Um, I gotta figure out if it's something I did or a defective part, but I won't do that in front of you. So let me show you. Okay, so I gotta say that the doors were great. The doors, they installed so easily. Um, like I said, the screws were already in the hardware. So it was literally just popping this in here, screwing it down, holding it up here, screwing it in. I did get the soft close hinges and I definitely like those. Um, okay. Uh, I do have to do some adjustments. You can see how like this isn't leveled. Um, you know, it's closer up there. So, I mean, that, that can all be adjusted on the hardware itself. Um, no big deal. Um, as for the drawers, you know, putting them together was pretty straightforward. Uh, but the rails, the rails started off great. I mean, this middle drawer, it was, it was a piece of cake. And then I got to this one and, you know, put it all together the same exact way. And, you know, it's just like, it's not doing what it's supposed to. <laughs> so I don't know if I missed a hole or something. I'm gonna have to take it apart. And that wasn't apparently obvious uh, when I was looking at it. So, um, okay. So next up, I am going to put uh, shelving here. That's kind of like, that acts as the top of the drawer. They provided the, the hardware for that. And, uh, and yeah, that'll allow me to put stuff on top of here. I also have all of the door and drawer hardware. Um, What's this called? Gribble, of course it is. Um, so yeah, I'll be putting this on. I think I'm gonna wait till the end when I'm uh, done doing all the trim work because I don't wanna like, you know, bump against something and break it off. But yeah, uh, not a bad night after a day of work. So yeah, I'll, uh, I'll see you on the next one. Actually, I take that back. One thing I forgot to mention was uh, those cabinet screws I put in. Um, there's none in there. Uh, to, uh, to affix these pieces, to the neighboring pieces like these guys. Um, yeah, I made the mistake of putting them at the bottom. So when I was screwing the rails in, obviously that wasn't gonna work. So I had to uh, just shift them up or down a space. Uh, just something to keep in mind if you're doing the same thing. Okay, that's it for part one. Thanks for watching. Be sure to check out part two where we will go over uh, trimming and painting and really finishing this whole thing out. Thanks.